Welcome to my tutorial that aims to show you how to develop a closure application. Um, well, a web application written in closure that is reactive and can be uploaded to Google App Engine. Um, what I'm assuming is that you have um, Liningen installed, that you have your App Engine SDK installed and well that's all. <coughs> so let's let's start. What we are going to use is uh, Chestnut which is basically a template for Liningen that um, lets you create a full featured um, reactive web app and makes use of Clojure, Clojure script of course of OM, which is a uh, wrapper around uh, the React.js library for, well, um, implementing or using reactive web components. <coughs> and what is cool about this is uh, that it features not only a wrapper like you're used to it, but it also features a closure script wrapper, which means you can type away in your wrapper um, closure script code and then immediately see the changes in, in your browser uh, window. So that sounds promising and sounds like it's a lot of fun. Um, and that's easy. The more difficult part is um, getting this thing to work on Google App Engine, what, but we'll cover this later. So what we're going to start with is um, setting up a basic chestnut project. Enough of this talk, let's just do it. Um, okay, that's we are using our Liningen new uh, template as we saw is called chestnut. Um, I'm, ch I'm calling it, well not chestnut Google App Engine. So that takes a moment like you're probably used to and okay so what we have here is a new project let's have a look at what um, what structure it has of course we have our project clj file oh and what, what, what's nice which uh, what i haven't mentioned yet is um, this chestnut um, already comes with support for heroku so you can upload it to heroku later if you like <coughs> but we'll stick to Google App Engine uh, um, today. What we have here is a set of files for different environments. So you usually have a dev environment where you have your browser REPL and uh, stuff like that that you want to use for developing interactively. And then of course you have your production environment that is missing um, these uh, interactive things like the browser wrapper and then you have a test environment where for running tests but we won't cover this uh, in this in this tutorial next thing is we have our source code which is um, basically divided into closure code which is the server side and closure script which is the client side code we also have a resources file which only consists of the HTML file and the CSS file that you can uh, adjust just like you want to. Um, the other things are not important right now. So what I'm going to do is, well, um, yeah, I'm opening my Emacs because editing is nicer in there. Um, this is the wrong chestnut Google App Engine and we open our project CLG file and see <coughs> well there's a lot of stuff in there already for example the ring server that you're probably familiar with we also have a composure included which is a routing library for web applications we have inLive included which is a nice library for manipulating uh, the DOM 
and querying it. You can query, for example, uh, DOM elements just like with uh, CSS selectors in JavaScript or jQuery. Um, this is the OM library, which is, as I mentioned, um, the wrapper around uh, the React.js. The environment thing is corresponds to to the file direct uh, the, the directory structure that I showed you in the beginning here with the different uh, profiles. Yeah, well, and then it's just um, closure script and a few plugins. And further down, we have a lot of settings that we are not going to look into in detail now. Instead, we are firing up a wrapper. I'm doing this. I could do it in the in Emacs, but uh, since I don't know if everybody is using Emacs, I'm doing it in the command line in the project directory. Um, okay, let's fire it up. It takes a moment. As usual. Come on. Oh man, it's slow. Okay, so what I, I'm going to do is um, show you the, just the basic chestnut example, like it's mentioned in the tutorial, in the, in the tutorial or in the quick start section of uh, chestnut itself. Um, the next step is I will change. I uh, will show you how to to have this application running in your in your um, local app engine dev server, and then finally we're going to upload it into a live system and have it run online in the cloud. Okay, so our REPL has finally decided that it, that it's uh, okay to start what we're having here now and now I'm can well connect my Emacs to it. That's probably not as I'm telling it local host and telling it the port. <coughs> of course I could also have done Citroen Jack in, but as I mentioned I don't want to confuse people that uh, that are not using Emacs. Well, actually, what I have here now in my Emacs is just the same uh, wrapper like I can see here. And what I'm doing is now to start the server or the application, you're calling the run function. Which, let's have a look at it before we start it, which is in the source directory closure server CLJ. So, we see a lot of requires we see the run function over here. Well, it calls a lot of other functions. It checks if it's in the develop if it's development in, uh, environment and does several things. Finally, what gets done in the end is just like in any other ring um, application that you're developing in Clojure is, you have a ring handler here and that is being started with the jetty adapter. Okay, so just call it and it tells a lot of blah blah blah. It takes a moment to compile a Java, uh, the closure script to JavaScript, as we'll see in a moment here. Okay, now, now we're up and running. And what you want to do now is uh, navigate your browser to localhost port 10555. Let's do this. Well, I've already done this, but I want to show you just a fresh start. So, okay. Hello, Chestnut. Let's inspect this. Okay, what we can see is there is an error about a WebSocket connection. We'll fix that in a moment. Um, because the reason for that is that we haven't started yet the browser REPL. 
the repo we are currently in is the, if you will, the server side. And now we're starting a repo for the client side. So that is, that's been quick. It's connected to port 9001. Should be. Let's clear this, reload, and we see we don't have an error anymore. Okay, great. Now, how can we how can we develop our stuff? Um, let's open. I'm just showing a brief uh, introduction. Let's go to the Clojure script source code. We see we have we have a main function there, which is actually just doing one thing. It uh, calls a macro macro. <coughs> and um, yeah, okay. I saved the file. I only inserted a blank line, but you see, in in the window um, on the lower s um, screen part here is that the Clojure script gets compiled immediately, and it also gets sent over to the browser immediately. So, what if we okay no forget it it's too complicated what if we change this h1 ele element to a paragraph element you see currently it's uh, looking like this it's a heading one and now we're changing it I just saved it you see it gets compiled switching over to the browser whoa baby <laughs> <coughs> okay so that immediately gets rendered and updated in your browser. Maybe I should take this window over to... Oh. Yeah, well, it's not that nice. Okay, once more. Yeah. Hello, chestnut. Okay, great. So. As we can see, we can interactively develop our Clojure script code and immediately see the changes in our uh, browser window. <coughs> Just for the sake of having another... Oh. Well, before I do that, let's open uh, our HTML file, which is uh, located in a resources directory, index.html we can see is really simple and what we see here is a diff with an ID called app and if we switch back to our Clojure script file we see that it's referenced here so that means whenever this uh, well when this function actually returns a, a react component um, of type heading one with the content that is taken from the atom over here. Well, the content, uh, what, what is in this uh, map is this string um, identified by the key text. So that's how the text gets inserted into the H1 component. We can um, insert more components by just calling the macro once more, for example. <coughs> and because this here is a little looks a little bit clumsy, there is a macro for this. It does basically the same, which is called component. And all we have to do is tell it. Okay, we want a heading two now. Nil. Uh, well, we could you could define some classes here that uh, should be inserted into, or some attributes that should be um, inserted into the HTML tag, but we just don't do this now. And well, no, not app because data. That's what I called it over there. <coughs> Now the second argument, as you can see above already, 
is the app state, which is just the atom that, that has been defined here in the beginning. And that's how we tell the root macro where to look when accessing some uh, state that we want to use in, in our component generation. Okay, and then last but not least we have to tell uh, this macro which component in the template in the index HTML file we want to have this component that we're generating here inserted into. So that's what, why we say some JavaScript get document, uh, document get element by ID and now we set app1 I think. Let's have a look. Oh, I haven't uh, yet uh, inserted a new one. <coughs> okay, so we're just making another diff, saving the HTML. And because we saved the HTML, I'll, I'll do a browser reloading here. Or let's see. Uh, this app1 diff. This app diff. Oh, doesn't even work. Okay, great. Well, it obviously ignores the content in here. Although I'm not doing anything in my closure script with it, because I haven't saved the file yet. So, but now when I save the file, well, actually, what we can check is uh, that we have the diff app and the diff app one. So that's why I had to reload um, the browser uh, window, is because when you change your HTML, it doesn't get updated automatically on the browser side. It just holds for when you are updating your closure script. So that's why I reload it once. So that we have um, this empty div here right now. So now when I save this file, we should magically see uh, heading 2 with the same text as heading 1. So let's try. There it is. Awesome, huh? <coughs> yeah, um, I bet that's uh, promising some fun for developing your next web app. <laughs> uh, it's always uh, nice to see feedback immediately when you change some something. Okay, so that's for that's it for uh, basic introduction into Chestnut, OM, Reactive, JS within the closure ecosystem. Um, yeah, so next part is going to be that we're trying we will try to prepare the project to work in the Google App, App Engine um, environment. <coughs>